so good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Liam Kennedy. I'm the editorial director of IPE based in London. Herzlich willkommen, wenn Sie nicht aus Berlin sind. Vielen Dank an unseren Berliner Gastgeber, insbesondere die Kollegen der ABA. I won't continue speaking in German. The proceedings today are, of course, in English. I will be acting as the day moderator. I'll be popping up. I will be introducing um, the speakers, most of the speakers fielding questions. I hope this will be a very interactive um, conversation and dialogue today. I hope there will be, be many exchanges as there already have been over coffee. I hope that there will be many ideas and many reflections um, as you proceed homewards and you communicate about today with your colleagues. In a moment, I will um, hand over to Jan Willem Baumer, the chair of Pensions Europe. Um, I will just reflect that we have a very packed and, and I think very exciting and interesting program. I think uh, Pensions Europe um, have done an excellent job putting uh, today's proceedings together. Um, at this stage, just one thing that I would um, also like to highlight is welcome to uh, our guests who are uh, watching remotely. Um, we uh, hope that, uh, that you enjoy the proceedings and um, that, that uh, you get as much out of it as everyone here in the room. And uh, very sorry not to see you in person, but um, we, we hope to see you at another event at uh, another time. Um, Jan Willem, I am going to um, hand over to you now. And I think, Jan Willem, you're going to introduce the first speaker and then, um, and then we will take it from there. Jan Willem, thank you very much. Meine Damen und Herren, guten Morgen. That's it. <laughs> Long time that I spoke German fluently. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's a great, great pleasure to have you all here and also hybrid, and for me to welcome, to welcome you at the Pensions Europe Annuals Conference here in Berlin. Um, my name is Jan Willem Bauma. I'm the chair and S chair of Pensions Europe I'm delighted to see so many of you, the room is full, uh, participating in our today's event uh, here in, uh, in Berlin, but also online. And so many thanks for your interest. For those who had the, the opportunity to travel, and I hope that you have some time, to also wander around the city of Berlin. There are so many historical places here, and if you have not yet done so, and you, if you have the chance to do it, please, please go. And of course, Berlin is not only full of history, but it is also a very vibrant modern city in which all of us can find something interesting to do and explore also otherwise. I would like to express my warmest thanks to our co-host Abba, Pensions Europe's German Member Association for organizing today's event with us. And I would, uh, and I would like to also warmly thank our uh, sponsors, Allianz, Eurex, Aeon and Metzler Pension Management, Willis Towers Watson and Previnet, as well as our media partners, IPE and Leiter. We highly appreciate your support and cooperation with us. Our, to, our today's discussion theme is how to protect pensions in the time of turmoil. I'm sure that you, all of you agree that the theme is very topical. Over the past years, we've been facing turmoil on top of turmoil. COVID pandemic, war in Europe, and increasing geopolitical tensions, rocketing inflation and interest rates, market bubbles and their crashes in financial markets, and economic uncertainty. Pension funds have had to go have had to thoroughly consider how to best cope with these challenges and changes. As combined, they have formed a difficult and some, sometimes even toxic mix for economy, investments and savings. Turmoil and crises have also a broader impact than economic uncertainty. If people lose their trust in the future, it will have serious consequences for the society. The good news is that Despite of all these turmoil, pension funds have stayed strong, thanks to their thorough risk management framework. According to the European Central Bank, the aggregate funding ratio of the euro, the euro area 
pension funds have remained high, being 123% at the end of 2022. To be able to best benefit from occupational and other funded pensions, they must be supported and strengthened across Europe. The regulatory and supervisory framework must be fit for purpose to allow pension funds to tackle the current and new challenges. Having an eye especially on the upcoming review of the IRP2 directive and various horizontal legislations, overlapping requirements and unnecessary costs and burdens to pension funds must be avoided. Ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of Pensions Europe annual conference is to bring together leading experts in pensions as well as pension professionals and EU officials to exchange views and best practices on the most topical issues in the pension landscape. Our today's conference will discuss the current macroeconomic situation of Europe, the many challenges faced by the pension funds and some solutions that can be envisaged by policymakers and institutional investors to protect people. Today's conference consists of speeches, presentations and panel discussions from key stakeholders in pensions and beyond, including the keynote speeches from Dr. Rolf Smachtenberg, Permanent State Secretary at the Federal Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs. Fausto Parente, Executive Director of IEOPA. Nice to have you again amongst our midst. The six main discussion topics for today are ingredients of good risk management for IORPS, the macroeconomic situation and the medium and long-term consequences for pensions, DB and DC schemes, risks, solutions, and opportunities, derivatives and clearing, what's the way forward? But also beyond economics, the health and social cost of the recent crises. We will explore that. Innova innovation in plan administration as a response to the turmoil. In short, I'm looking forward to interesting and fruitful discussions on all of these very, uh, important topics. And without further ado, I would like to hand over to Alexander Grande, who is head of German Desk Group Regulatory and Public Policy at Allianz. He will give another welcome address, and I would again like to warmly thank Allianz for hosting our today's event in this magnificent forum. Mr. Grande, the floor is yours. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, dear colleagues, welcome to Allianz. My name is Alexander Grande and it is my pleasure to welcome you here in our Allianz Forum at the Brandenburg Gate. Thank you for joining us for this year's Pensions Europe Annual Conference. It is a pleasure and an honor for us to have you here as our guests. The heating under which we gather today could not be much more dramatic. How to protect pensions in the time of turmoil. When the Pensions Europe annual meeting took, took place last time in person, as far as I know, it was in 2019 in Brussels. It was June 6th. The world looked different. I bet most of us were not familiar with the coronavirus, war in Europe, unimaginable on June 6th in 2019. But today, on April, April, April the 20th this year, Ukraine has been at war for more than a year. And an end as much as we wish for it is unfortunately not in sight. Today, we live in a time characterized by these crises, which present us all with unexpected challenges. This also and especially applies to the entire financial sector. Both crises, pandemic and war, have presented us, the financial industry, with numerous challenges in a financial, operational, and logistical way. And this also applies to the pension sector. But there are other challenges here in particular. 
the excessive and sometimes overwhelming regulation which is currently overstraining some market participants. The difficult capital market environment is also causing unrest. Notwithstanding the recent rise in interest rates, it has become more difficult for both employers and external pension providers to earn the benefits promised in the past. The pressure on pensions is increasing. And this is the reason why a day like this, a professional exchange of pension experts is so immensely important. I would like to encourage you today to use this day not only to look at the challenges and turmoil of our time, but also and especially at the opportunities. Opportunities that we can seize and that may also result from the possibility of today's personal exchange. As Allianz Group, we are always a reliable partner for our customers when it comes to their retirement provision. We provide various options for employee loyalty through company pension schemes. I'm sure that today's event will help us to understand better how to protect pensions in time of turmoil. This also includes courage and innovative strength to help innovative ideas to succeed. With this in mind, I am very much looking forward to the exchange with you and to a successful event today. Thank you very much. Mr. Grandi, thank you very much for your opening words. It's now my pleasure to invite to the stage Herr Dr. Rolf Schmachtenberg, who is Permanent State Secretary at the Federal Ministry of Labor and, Ministry of Fair, uh, Labor and Social Affairs here in Berlin. Over to you. Good morning to everybody. As I heard, professionals in matters of pension from more or less all over the European world and maybe beyond. Thank you very much for coming to Berlin, to giving Berlin the chance to be a hospital town and to use this opportunity to exchange views, experiences, information with each other. And I'm happy that I was invited because this gives me the opportunity to tell you a little bit about what's going on in German uh, policy for old age income security. We could call it like this. Or oh, there was a title. Okay. Old age provision via the capital markets, stable and social. And then a question mark. Hmm. How to proceed with funded old age provision? Okay, good. It's a very good topic. And you know all we face challenges. So we don't mention them, but we know we have a lot of challenges. And when you're looking for old age income, that is always a long-term consideration. And there's only one thing sure, that nothing is certain. That's the only security we have, actually. Now, ha, the usual problem. No? Next slide, maybe someone can. Ah, I will always say to whom? To you? <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah, so, and to, to introduce a little bit in the German picture, I, I have to go a little bit back. Uh, the present discussions which I would like to present to you cannot be understood without some historical background. And I won't start in 1889, so we are very proud of this early starting of the German pension system. But I go back to 1957, because that was actually the starting point of the uh, statutory pension system as we know it today, which is financed one-third by 
contributions of the employers, one third of employees, and close to a third by tax money. And actually, what is very often forgotten, this was like this also already in 1957. So the tax uh, part in the financing of the German uh, system is not a consequence of any crisis, it, it's part of its concept. And uh, additionally to this, we have, besides the statutory pension, occupational pension system, and we have, particularly since uh, around 2000, a third column of personal pensions. And if we now discuss, when we now discuss the future development, we discuss all three simultaneously. And uh, this was the background of what happened during the last time. Slide, please. Ah, no, other direction. Yeah, so we look back to the year 2000, because in the year 2000, 2001, we had a big reform in a deeper way. And this reform was based on the then long-term projections. And they were dominated by the goal to fix the financing side of the contributional finance pension system. That was the main purpose. It was a purpose which was a little bit one-sided view to fix the financing side. Next slide. And so there was at that time a huge economic problem, high unemployment, looming demographic problems, funding problems for statutory pension. The contribution rate was then 20.3%, now it's 18.6%. And there was a decision then to reform the system in a way that the level of the pension system should go down for the future. And from roughly 53%, what is a parameter of the level of the pension, it's really a technical parameter, which can be explained if you ask for it, um, to roughly 48% until 2030. And the idea was, by this, to reduce the burden of the employers and employees, but at the same time to compensate by a one-sided burden for the employees. Because they were supposed, not obligatory, but they were supposed to pay 4% to a system of so-called restart pension, private pension. So that basically from the worker's side, the contribution rate was then 13, actually. 13 and for employers, 9. If they followed the rule. And um, besides this, there was the idea to uh, increase uh, the impact of the occupational pension system uh, to get an expansion of this system implemented. So, that was the basic idea. Next slide is the today's assessment. And what is interesting is now the next slide, because it's a good example of which we have many, that projections are uncertain. What is shown here, the orange line was the expected um, labor market development from 2000 for the next 2022 years, which was the basis for this reform. And uh, the blue level is what happened, actually, and is in millions. So we expected a stable workforce from, of 32 million while increasing to have more and more people receiving pensions. Yeah, so this was this problem then. But in fact, in Germany, uh, since 2008-10, we had a good ex expansion of the labor market, which was not expected. And here is now really a problem. If, if you organize your system based on pessimistic prognosis, you might have a too restricted policy. If, when today we are confronted with housing market problems in Germany, that is because also the housing market expected a shrinking population, a shrinking housing market, 
and now we are missing houses. We are in need to get foreign workforce, but we don't have enough apartments to house them all. So we have really to change our mindset, how we can develop our society, our economy, such that we can scope with the future tasks, in particular the uh, environmental change. And this then has a different background also for uh, our social security system. So the next slides are even more technical, but maybe you are experts, I would say. So we have here the pension level and the contribution rate, uh, projections and actual figures. So the projection in 2007 was quite pessimistic. The blue line goes down. The pension level goes down. And the orange uh, line is what happened actually. And since 2018, also by law, we have fixed the pension replacement rate not to shrink more. It has to be above 48%, what it does so far more or less automatically. And on the other hand, we had expected contribution rates climbing up to 22% in 2030, the blue line on the right-hand side, but the actual development was much different. They went down. And actually, that's an interesting uh, matter of fact with, if you compare the German pension system with other pension systems, um, we did not use this to build up a reserve. There are many um, countries which now have quite large reserves in the pension system. Finland, for example, Japan, the US. Um, I'm not speaking of Norway because Norway is a different case with its oil money. But with countries in which they have created a quite fundamental reserve in the capital market to stabilize and to finance the statutory pension system because they did not do what we did. We went down with the contribution rate even. Yeah, this is interesting. So here, once again, you can see that we are very much, we were very much fixed in the idea how we can have low contribution rates and not using it for saving for the future. But now, and it simultaneously, the next slide shows you what happened with the second and third system. So um, yellow, yellow orange, orange is the occupational pension system with the active entitlements. And the red uh, column shows the restock contracts of personal pensions, the number of contracts. So there might be, there, there are less people. There are people with two contracts. But here you can see that we had a quite good development from 2001 to 2011 in both, which is stronger development on the side of the Riester contracts. But now the number of Riester contracts has started to shrink. And even the, the number of active contracts is even shrinking more. Because basically the experience with this kind of um, system is that it's very costly. It's not very efficient. You have a lot of costs and now more and more consumers know about this, combined with the effects of low interest rates, combined with the effect that this is a product where you have a guarantee on nominal terms. So that there is no chance to have maybe more risky financial market activities which might maybe compensate for high costs. And this combination actually after 20 years we have a learning, basically. This system is not very attractive. And it was not able to supplement or to complement the missing, yeah, if you have the idea, okay, let's shrink the system which is financed by all and let it compensate only politics aside, only by workers financed with this Riester approach, then you must say after 20 years, it didn't work good. So 
And that is basically the background of what we are discussing now. Next slide. It's a new approach. Zack, zack. Next slide. Um, so the idea is that we replace the formula in the pension system in a way that instead of having a shrinking pension level over the time, we stabilize it on a minimum level of 48%, which was decided by this coalition. And we have now these discussions with our Ministry of Finance, and very soon we will present the law in which this will be proposed according to the um, decision by our coalition partners. And the idea is uh, to have this then for the next future. And this means also that we will have some impact on contributions. They will rise, sure. And also on uh, the financial side for the government. But it will be all relatively weak if you remember the prognosis from 2000. Because our overall economic development is quite strong and we are very optimistic that with all what we have to do now for the climate change economic activities will create a lot of employment, will also create a lot of social uh, security at the end. And uh, it's a very important point because also in the public opinion we have to make sure that the statutory pension system does not lose its legitimacy. If we continue to have a system of shrinking pension level, more and more people would depend on social assistance in the old age. And then you have a very simple question. Why I am obliged to pay contribution to a system which at the end gives me nothing in the German environment where we have a social assistance. In another country where you might not have a social assistance of the type we have in Germany, you might not have this argument. But in the German biotopic, you have this problem. You have to face this. So, so you have to have a certain level of your statutory pension system to legitimize obligatory contributions. And uh, to now combine it with the capital market, we will introduce a new instrument, which we call generational capital. Oh, that's great. Next slide. What is this now? The idea is that we actually we propose the lawmaker, the parliament, it's the parliament who does, to found a foundation to support the financial base of the statutory pension system. And uh, so the idea is to finance from the government, basically loan-based, during the next years, to build up a quite substantial stock of capital, and then to use the revenues, actually the net revenues, because you have also to finance the loans, to complement the contributions in the statutory pension systems. And this should start around 2035, 36, 37, so that from then on, we will have now built into the system of statutory pension system a capital approach. 2000, this capital approach was externalized with this RISTA system, which did not work and was very inefficient. Now, we concentrated in one one only capital stock, that's very efficient. We don't need to have individual accounts for everybody because the individual account is the one you have with the statutory pension system, but also being in the statutory pension system, you will benefit from returns from the capital market which are generated by this general generation, generational capital. And um, we have some good experience with the management of a fund, which is a German nuclear waste management fund. And to be efficient, the idea is to use the admin, the administration, 
so I call it then CEO or something, but basically it's the administration of this fund, whatever that title is, with all respect, to use this expertise also in a synergetic way for the management of this fund. Actually, this already initiates some ideas. Maybe we should have one agency as a government to manage funds, because we have some other funds here and there, which are then somewhere <laughs> in the administration for the moment. But this is the next step, which is not now my concern, but the concern of the government altogether. Yeah. So this is really a new point. Next slide. So we start really a new way. And uh, this in generational capital will be independent of the statutory pension insurance. That's very important. It's an own body. And for us, it's very important that um, the risk which is associated with the capital investment in the stock market is not bared by the statutory pension insurance system. So it's a separate entity. And it's only the revenues which help to stabilize the statutory pension system. And we have, and these are points of discussion we have now with our colleagues from the Ministry to Finance, how to mitigate risks then. What happens if returns are not high enough? How can we then maybe have an in-between um, in uh, mechanism? Always having in mind that in the long run, capital markets are quite good in achieving certain returns, but with some valleys and some hills, hopefully. So it's another point how to bridge the valleys and how to tunnel then the mountains which we foresee for the future, but it's more a technique then. But this business of stabilization should be done in this generational fund and not within the pension system. That's very important. And, um, but it's also very important, as we know all by literature, and it's actually also very fast understood, always to change from a contributional finance pay-as-you-go system to a funded system has a double burden if you, would, if you did it, but this we are not doing. So we have the stable statutory pension system, and we add on, on top, this generational capital. Yeah. What happened now in the world, which I think is of more concern for you, occupational pension and their role, actually they developed quite well. We have seen this orange curve. We started with a participation rate of about 20, 23% of workforce. Now we have 53%. And actually that's a backslide of the good development of employment. In absolute figures, occupational pensions increases in Germany, in relative not. Why? Because employment is growing faster than we get new uh, contracts in occupational pensions. So I'm, I'm not so sorry about this development. So, so it's, it's good. And we have the 53. And um, to make it more attractive, we had a reform in 2018, which I will come later, next, ship, next slide first, there you have some figures. You, anyway, this will be contribute, distributed to you if you are interested in. We have different types, the four famous five ways of occupational pension in German. And here you see where they are. The Pensionskassen, Pensionsfonds, direct insurances, life insurances is very big, direct commitment, support funds, public services. Yeah, that's also known that for occupational uh, pension, always the public service in all countries is more the, or less always a safe basis. Yeah. Okay, so next slide. Um, so our goal is to increase this participation rate. And in particular, we have a problem with people which have a low income and which are working in small enterprises or might even work typically in a in an environment where you change maybe your contract quite often. Hotels, gastronomy, small enterprises. So how do we get a way to include them? And now we have the first 
collective agreements with comprehensive coverage in some sectors, construction, metal, and electric, and with the law from 2018, we did some improvements. In particular, we uh, uh, fixed, we improved the low-income situation with the social assistance system, and we introduced a no new way, the so-called social partner model, that uh, allows that by collective agreements on occupational pension benefits, uh, social partners create their own pension system. Next slide. And for this way, we opened uh, the way of the defined contribution system. That is a change of a paradigm, which for only this kind of model was opened in the German world of occupational pension systems. And the good news is that so we had corona and all processes were deleted. Now we have already three of these social partner models which start to work and which initiate a new phase also actually of cooperation between our social partners. Now being in charge of such a pension fund together because by law they have really to be active also in the responsibility to manage this. They can have some, and they have some bank or whatever, to manage it on a daily basis, but it's very important that social partners are involved because as per this concept, their role is also to, to be part of the mechanisms to have a higher confidence in this way of um, occupational pension. And if this now starts and becomes big, then we can have here effects of scales and we think that this can be a very, very good development. And now, next slide. In this year now, during the next weeks, we will present ideas how to improve this model, not to change, it's not a big reform, just to only to improve. And one point is that we want to extend the social partnership model in a way that all those low, small companies and workers which are not within the union can also join the social partner model to have a bigger group, to, to get, become them bigger and to reach out to those in those difficult work environments. And second, we would also like to, to improve um, subsidies. We have uh, it's paragraph, is, no, how do you say, section 100 of the German tax law where we have some uh, rules how to uh, give subsidize, and we would really like to increase this for low income. So that then for people with low income, it could be very interesting to uh, become a member in a social partner model. Now, we are one too fast. Conclusions, there was one in between, no? One slide back, please. Yes, thank you. Um, for the third column, I made very clear that what happened so far was not very convincing. And now, under the lead of the Ministry of Finance, we have a very intense discussion. That was yesterday, one committee, how um, to improve this world. So there are different aspects were discussed, costs, risks, how we can subsidize new types of products, um, maybe coming away from um, this restart model is basically insurances, which are quite costly. There's also the idea in the space, in the flow, whether maybe the government should create an uh, institution which offers um, this kind of products. So this is all in discussion to find a solution to have a better product in this field. But it's very clear, and according to these discussions, that, that actually the, the main group which I have in mind, people who need really a better old age income and which are not able to organize it by themselves, people with low income, we don't really reach by the third column. Because their capacities to give money to the third column are restricted because they have low income. 
So here is really the danger to create interesting things, but it's not, the, not for the goal we have in mind. That is why for us it's so important to stabilize the first column and to expand within the second column. So that is the main way we go. And then, okay, it's nice to have a third uh, column as well in the store. So conclusions. Statutory pension insurance based on pay-as-you-go system is and will be the key pillar of old age provision. Actually, it's about, it's more than 60% of old age income in Germany is due to this system. Interesting enough, in East Germany, 90%. In West Germany, a little bit less than 60%. It's very interesting that even 30 years after unification, here you are actually in East Berlin, um, 200 meters there not, but here yes, um, there is still a big difference. Um, so it, that's also why actually the state of pension insurance system is politically so important, but because for many people it's the only income in the old age. And then uh, combine it with the funded element, strengthen its financial sustainability. That is this double step we want to go this year, stabilize and introduce a new instrument. And besides this, we would like to um, organize occupational pension in a still better way. And yeah, conclusion is personal pension for the time being are a special challenge. Thank you all very much for your attention and enjoy your time, your conference, your talks here in Berlin. Thank you very much.